everybody, Peshman Gedimi here, founder of Watch Trading Academy, and today is yet another incredible day because we have another member that has hit the 100K mark and joined our 100K club. Now, if you're not aware of what the 100K club is, it is a very exclusive club where some of our members are able to hit $100,000 in net profits within a 12-month cycle, which means that they have been able to showcase their ability to hit a six-figure return in watch trading in a 12 month range. Now, this is really important because we live in a world right now where people are gambling their way into crypto and into other things, hoping to make money. Where reality is with watch trading, it's a very progressive type game and it continuously, continuously pay off. I mean, many of our members who hit the 100K mark last year are not doing three to 400K and joining the 100K club today is Chris Cortese. So welcome, buddy. Thank you, PJ. It's great to be here. So I, I appreciate you sharing some of your thoughts with us. Mm -hmm. So I, every time someone hits the 100K club mark, they come here and we talk. The reason we talk is because one, we want people to be inspired to know what's possible. But then two, uh, every single person has a different way of getting there, mm -hmm. right? Some people do more the new watches, some people do certain brands over others, and more importantly, some people use different outlets to buy and sell watches. Mm -hmm. So different things work for different people, right? Mm -hmm. And one of the things I've always argued is that watch trading is something that anyone can start with. And more importantly, they can start at any pace or they can do it full-time, part-time, little time, or they can do it, you know, go in all the way and make it their full-time business. Mm -hmm. So how did it start for you? And how much money did you start with? Okay. Uh, so I started trading watches before I had heard about Watch Trading Academy. And I, I've always been fascinated with watches and just the idea of time in general. And so when I first started trading watches, it was just watches I wanted. It was always emotional purchases like, oh, I've never had that Omega with the cool moon face mm -hmm. on it. I've never had um, that Rolex, the vintage Rolex Daytona before. I'm just going to buy that. And when I got into Watch Trading Academy, um, I, I had seen one of your advertisements and I was like, oh, this guy's teaching people how to trade watches profitably. I knew it could work because I had seen some profits on watch mm -hmm. deals that I had done. But I had also seen where it hadn't gone so well for me. I was like, damn, why did I lose 2K on that watch? And so I knew it could work and I knew I just needed to form that consistency of making every deal work where every mm -hmm. deal was a win and not just half of more wins, half of more losses. So when I signed up for the course, I cashed out my 401k and I had some extra credit and I put that all into watch trading. So I, had, I started with about 40k. And since I had been trading watches for about two years prior to Watch Trading Academy, um, I had built up some, I, I call them some pretty bad habits with that and you know just getting into those emotional purchases. So as soon as I signed up, within the first month or so, I lost about five grand just because I was still nice. doing those emotional purchases. Okay. Like, fuck yeah, I signed up for this course. TJ, I'm gonna buy this watch. PJ's gonna teach me how to sell it and I'm gonna be great. Mm -hmm. And then uh, after a while, I was like, oh, this is uh, that's not exactly what I was supposed to be doing. So I paid attention to the courses again, got into part two, took Cal's course, took Cal's coaching, and really honed in on how to make these financial transactions. It's not, oh, I want this watch, so I'm gonna buy it. It's do the numbers work for it. And people offer me watches all the time now. It's like, well, I don't really want that watch, but the numbers can work out. So, so you said a couple of things. I mean, there's a lot to unpack mm -hmm. here, but I think the, the first thing that people need to kind of realize is it's a big deal to cash out your 401k because usually your reserve money, it's not like mm -hmm. your primary money. So tell me, what gave you the courage to do that, to, to believe in? Because you just said right now, you didn't follow their training instantly. You could kind of learn, but you were like, I'm still going to buy this watch right. everyone and, and lose money. So the, the training's there, but you kind of see this ad, you join Watch Training Academy. Why do you have confidence to instantly drop 40 grand into the market? Meaning like to kind of go right. all in, like what was the game plan there. So, like I said, when I first started, I was, you know, losing money or balancing out wins and losses, but I understood where that win came from and where the loss came from. When I looked at the stock market, or funny you mentioned crypto, if I looked at crypto, I don't understand why that's going up and down. And I know a lot of people make a lot of money on the stock market, mm -hmm. but right when COVID hit, I saw it going down, like way, way, way down. Everybody did. And I knew it would come back up. But the point is, I couldn't figure out, I did not understand why it was going down. Okay. The metrics, the data. Right, right, right. And I know I could have studied that whole market and become a great stock market investor. But at that point, I understood why my watch transactions were what they were. I understood okay. why people buy watches. And I understood um, what I could do with my money. 
with it being in the stock market, it, I, it was leaving it up to fate. Like, oh, companies might go up, companies might go down. I might make 7% a year, I might make 10% a year, but I didn't fully grasp it. And so the cashing out the 401k was more a big decision for me to say, I'm taking charge of what I'm doing with my investments and my money, and I'm choosing watch trading because I think I understand it. And so from that point forward, it was more of, I wanted to be in control of my investments. I didn't want somebody else to be in control of my investments. Okay. So. so, I mean, that's fair, that, that makes mm -hmm. sense. So you understood the game, mm -hmm. even though you didn't exactly follow the training. So let's talk about not following the training because this is something I hear a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay, PJ, I paid you money. I, I'm going in the academy and I'm, I'm learning this. And yet my first choice instantly after is not to do what I learned in training. <laughs> why, right. why did this get <laughs> It was like, well, I signed up for exotic car hacks and I just bought this BMW yeah, i8. It's, it's like, like well, what, what you are you do doing? It's like, <laughs> it's, it, there is a disconnect because when you, when you see somebody like you who's very successful at this and you're teaching people how to do it, somebody's like, okay, I've signed up for the course. Where's my money? Like, where's, where's all this, this profit from watches? Okay. And I think people don't realize how much of a time investment it takes and how much of a, a mindset investment it takes. Sure. It's not just... So, so tell us more about that because I think that's really important. Like, like what you're saying right here is like reality, right? Like mm -hmm. it's like, hey, I had my own experience. You know, I, I got into this course, but you know, I had to realize that you need these two things. So, so tell us more. What are those investments? What is a mindset investment? Oh, so you need to you need to study the market one for for the time investment and the mindset investment is uh, like you say well how do you just cash out your 401k like that that was the mindset investment of this is how I'm going to be doing things from now on I'm I'm switching my mindset I'm not relying on somebody else and if you're not relying on somebody else for your investment then you need to know what you're doing with your money and so if you're into the watch market, you got to study the watch market. You have to know what's happening. You have to know which models are hot, which models are not, which brands are good, which brands are bad. And that's not, you know, a, a week long process. It took me three months before I started profiting from watches. And then now a year, year and a half later, it's finally at the point where I'm, you know, getting deals coming into me and I'm, I'm making money on almost every de on every deal that I do. And so, it's not, it, it doesn't happen fast. It's not get rich quick. And it's, it's, um, it's, it, it's your mindset that you have to change to be able to think that way. So you said you make money on every deal you've had. I'm sure you've lost money too. Mm -hmm. Tell yes, me about what was the biggest loss? So the biggest loss. That's more fun than the biggest win. Yeah, sure, sure. So are, are we going the pre WTA losses or the post? No, no, no. After uh, the okay, course, after meaning WTA. like what was the, after you followed the course, I want to know when did you make a legitimate mistake that now looking back, and then I want you to self-analyze that mistake because I think okay. many people will, will kind of look at that and understand it. So, what did you buy? How much did you pay? Why was it okay. a mistake? So the, the, the biggest loss I had was probably, it was, it was actually only about $750. Okay. But it was because I had started taking too many deals that I didn't really analyze that much. Like I, I do a lot of trades. That's kind of like the... It's the a good thing way to start. It's the yeah. thing that's worked out best for me because a lot of people, you know, a lot of retail clients out there have watches that they don't want anymore. Mm -hmm. They might not want to drop best way to buy too much money. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And so I did a whole lot of trades and I'd end up getting into a piece after like, you know, a three piece long cycle that I that wasn't the best buy mm -hmm. in my mind. And so I had like three or four of those mm -hmm. and I lumped them together in a trade deal with somebody and just got into something a more higher end piece. So based on that, I lost about $750 and missed out on some potential profit from those watches. But they'd already been sitting for a couple months. So it was at the point where I was saying, okay, that potential profit profit is, is unrealized. That's not happening. Well, well, looking back, how would you have changed that situation? Would you have changed it or was that an inevitable kind of like, like was the loss necessary or could it have been avoided? It could have been avoided, but at that point, then you have your capital tied up and you're waiting for that profit to come. And mm -hmm. so I think at some point people need to draw a line that says, you know, yes, I can make a thousand bucks on this watch, but I've been trying to do that for six months. It's not happening. But this is exactly one of the things I always say in, in a lot of my training. I talk about the best winners are the ones who know how to lose. Right. Like you have to know when it's okay to lose. You right. You have to it, choose. It, and that's a big mindset thing too. You have to change your ego. You have to switch right. off your ego to say, no, I'm going to make a thousand bucks on this watch. It's like, no, you're going to 
break even or take a little bit of loss, and then put that 10K into something else mm -hmm. that's going to make you 2K. It's yeah, a lot of times people don't realize, I've said this over and over, that you can make five losses in a row for 200 bucks, 300 bucks, 500 bucks, and suddenly have a 10K win. Right. That basically wipes everything in, puts you positive, just like the stock market. Right. And a lot of times people are so afraid of taking that $100 win or loss that they basically stay stuck in the idea and just don't participate to constantly try to get that larger win. And I think, I think a lot of that comes from too, when, when you first start something like this, it's new. It's, it's new to a lot of people who sign up. Some people who sign up don't even realize that watches, you know, our money. Yeah. And so when you first start, you do have to prove to yourself that it works. You have to, right. you have to see that, okay, I started with this amount of money. I now have this amount of money because I sold a watch. And if you can't it's do confidence that, basically right. and you're getting you can't in the do that and you're like, okay, I'm starting with this amount of money and I'm losing a couple hundred bucks. It's only a couple hundred bucks, but you're not proving it to yourself yet. Correct. So you have to have the confidence to know like, no, this can work. I can make it work, but this wasn't the one to go for. And that, mm -hmm. that's a hard pill to swallow sometimes, especially if you're starting out or especially if you know you're, you know, it's been a, a long time that you've been holding that. You feel like, fuck, I just wasted all this time. But you didn't. You made a mistake and then you learned something from it. You put time, you invested time into learning something, I would say. So why do you think it's a tough pill to swallow? Because usually the capital loss is not significant. Like mm -hmm. if you're buying the watches right, even if you're overexposed 10% uh, on a 5K watch is $500. Right. It doesn't end your game. Right. You know, you don't go from like, oh, I did my first watch deal. I'm out. You know, right. like I'm basically right. done. Make so, so why do you think that happens? Why do you think someone goes through that place mentally where they go, I just can't swallow a 10% loss in learning this, you know? Because that's, the, that's just your ego talking. If, if you're at that point, you're saying, I can't take this $500 loss, even though I might have $10,000 to put in watches. I can't take this $500 loss because I have proven that I have failed. At this one point, I've proven that I failed. You know, you have to be able to say like, okay, I made a mistake. I'm not failing at watch trading. This one deal failed, but that one deal is not your watch trading journey. So I, I think it, if you can get yourself to say, okay, this was a mistake, let's just move on. You'll be a lot more successful than saying, no, I have to make this right. I have to do this one. This is the only way it can work is if I prove to myself that on this first deal, I make money. I mean, I, I find that fascinating because I think everything we're talking about here is very true for a lot of members, right? Uh, but, but I think you, you talk about this ego thing and I wanna talk about that for a second because it's very easy in this game to get sucked into all of these different groups and, mm -hmm. and people pretending to be experts at what they do across the board and people telling you you bought something too high and you need to sell it to them cheaper. Tell me about your experience with other people as you kind of started. Did it feel like other people were playing you or like how, how did you kind of navigate the relationship aspect of the business, which I think is one of the hardest parts of the training because I can't teach someone how to read a person. You know, like, like meaning like you're either right. a good people reader or you're not. Right. A, a lot of times people get bamboozled into people pretending to be their friends only to buy their shit cheap or, or right. sell them out. And, and, and that happens a lot when you're talking to people, right. when you're talking about money in, in mm -hmm. general. And so if you post a watch online and somebody contacts you about it, you have to know what type of person that is. Does that person own a jewelry store? Does that, is that person a wholesale watch dealer? Is that person just a guy trying to buy or sell a watch? And then if you look at it from that lens, it's like, okay, why would that category of person say this thing? Oh, they're telling me my watch is a piece of crap and I paid too much because he wants the margin on it. He right. wants the 20%. But then why would he want to buy it if, he, if exactly. it's a piece of crap? Exactly. You know, it's like yeah. guys that come up to you, like, I want to buy your car. And you're like, great. Well, it's all broken. Who would want that? Well, why are you here? <laughs> it's like you're here exactly. talking to me about yeah, it. Exactly. And, and so it's, it's that lens you put in front of it saying, okay, this person is this category trying to buy this thing for me. So if it's a retail client and he's like, oh, I collect these particular watches. I don't want this one because of this little nick mm -hmm. on it or whatever. And I didn't realize that before. Sorry for your time. There's not an amount of money you're going to be able to present to that guy that's going to make mm -hmm. him want it because he wants to collect the perfect example or whatever. Right. And a jeweler is going to say, um, it, they'll be like, oh, it's got all these things wrong with it. Nobody's going to buy it. It'll give you half what you're asking. So you, you just have to figure out who you're talking to when, you, when you're well, assessing actually, their offers. That's actually really good. And I always say you can't sell fish to a fisherman and you can't expect right. the fisherman to buy fish from you right. at, at a premium, right? right? Like fishermen buy fish at a discount. And often I think we fail to identify who's a fisherman right. because someone pretends to be a collector or something. And mm -hmm. the reality is they're a collector reseller. They're not really a collector that, that collects watches. Uh, and I think that does make a difference, right? Because a, a real yeah. collector 
buys a watch to keep. Even if it has a, a monetary value, a real collector is not instantly looking to flip a watch. Right, and so sometimes they're, they're willing to pay what it'll take to get the piece that they want. So right. you have to identify, if you're going for a certain market of collectors, yeah, you have of to course. identify what do people look for. Of course, that. and so. I identify myself as a collector, and this is a good example. Like I like wear something like this, but I may buy normal APs. I, mm -hmm. I don't wear normal APs, meaning I don't go and purchase an AP to wear. And even though I'm, I, I am a collector for certain pieces, I'm a reseller flipper of these other pieces. Right. So, so I think a lot of times there's this confusion because people are like, well, I've seen this watch collection, it's real. Well, yeah, that's fine, but it doesn't mean that everything I buy, I buy to collect. Just like not every car I purchase is meant to be here. Sometimes I'm like, I thought it was cool, but you know, I don't really want it. Is right. there margin to make? And then you kind of move the item. So how long did it take you? I mean, you said a year and a half, like since you kind of started with WTA and now you're already in the 100K club. So let's talk a little bit about what advice do you have for people that are starting this right now and find a lot of confusion and, you know, they see these success stories. They go, wow, one year, you know, this dude's like getting it. They see other people hit the 100K club in two years. And they, they can't seem to bridge their way from like, hey, I'm starting. I only have $1,500 in my name. And where do I see that 100K? Right. Yeah. So I think if, if I, I know there's a lot of people who are on the sidelines or haven't started, bought the course a couple of years ago. Or haven't done anything with it. Right. Yeah. And it, it doesn't matter when you got the course. If you got the course two years ago, if you got a course one year ago, it doesn't matter if you haven't done anything yet. When you make the decision that this is when I'm starting, then start keeping track of yourself, how well you're doing. And like we discussed before, you have to be able to accept the fact that you might lose money. And if you're going to start a business, like you just open a regular store, you open a deli or something like that, there's a much higher potential for losing money than a lot five, more, yeah. 500 bucks. And you usually have to put up a lot more money mm -hmm. to start something like that or get a giant business loan. And then you can't just get out because like, exactly. you don't want to do yeah, it that week. You know, right. like you, you have to open your it's store. It's not that easy. So with watches, it's a very good way to get into a business that has very little risk when you're first starting. The only way you're going to lose 10 grand the first time you, you do a watch transaction is somebody robs you. Mm -hmm. Like you're not just going to say, oh, I bought this watch for 10 grand and it's actually worth zero dollars. That just, mm -hmm. it doesn't work that way. So you have to be able to have confidence in yourself to study the course materials, pay attention to the course materials, and then really use that to make some calculations, make some calculated offers that what, what are you going to get into this watch for? What are you going to get out of it for? Before you buy the watch, you need to know what you're going to sell that watch for. And not, oh, it'd be great. You know, everything I'm going to buy, I'm going to sell for a thousand bucks more. You have to make those calculations beforehand to show that it actually works and not be scared that, hey, it didn't work. I lost 500 bucks. You mean Try you have again. to follow the data and not your emotions. Right, exactly, exactly. And don't buy the watches that you've always wanted to buy because that, oh, I've always wanted a, an Omega, but I can only really afford a tag. But buy what you can afford to start out that's going to make you money. So, you know, there, there is... Uh, you, you've seen people in the group, you know, in, in the part one group, people starting, there's all types of same questions. How do I know what to pay? How do I know how to do mm -hmm. this? What advice do you have for people who are starting this? What, what should they be doing that you didn't do? You know, like what, what should they kind of follow through on, like maybe in ways you wish you would have done starting up? Um, I think the best thing to do is take notes in the course because I didn't take notes the first time I watched it. And then and when I got into, well, I watched part one and I made some of those purchases mm -hmm. at the beginning that didn't work out for me. And I realized I was like, okay, I, I think I know what I just watched, but I had to go through and I had to watch it again. So if you watch it once and you take notes and you really pay attention to what's said, and if you sign up for the mastermind too, just hearing you talk about the market every week, mm -hmm. that's, that's very valuable information, I think. How has that helped you in general? Like having market, because I mean, I see market information is very valuable for someone like me from buying 100 to 300K watches. There's a significant fluctuation in market changes that can hurt a portfolio mm -hmm. by like 20% in one right. day. This looks like a big deal. 20% on a million is 200 grand, yeah, right? Yeah. But how have you with normal watches, you know, under 30 grand, found that information valuable. I just want to understand your perspective. So, because I, I know there's value there, but I think people sometimes have a hard time connecting market value to watch trading. Instead, mm -hmm. they think of it as market value to investing only. And they think to themselves, well, if I'm not in part three, what do I need to get market information right. for? So, I mean, 
like if, if you're on the masterminds, you get the newsletter with the top 10 watches of the week and you can compare those to, to past newsletters and in mm -hmm. the future as well. So you can see, okay, these watches like, and, and it starts, there's a lot of 10 K and, mm -hmm. and under watches there. Yeah, too. a lot. Yeah. So you can say, oh, this Breitling or this Omega or this Panerai was going for this amount six months ago. Now it's up here. That can kind of let you know that it's still in demand. Mm -hmm. It's not a watch that like, okay, there's this this two-tone Cartier that maybe not everybody's really excited about or something. Yeah, you can find a customer for it, but it's not like, it, it helps let you know which watches are good ones to go after. And especially with the target buys, target sells, things like that. That, that can really help too, because you can revisit those and say, okay. oh, I was looking at this, just searching your email for that, that one. And you can, you can find what, about what to pay for it. So that's very helpful. Okay, so, you know, one last, question really because I, I want to be mindful of your time I don't want this to become a 10-hour interview uh, one of the things I was going to ask is you've been able to hit this milestone that many people wish they could hit you know like it, this is this is a big deal because I said the game starts at the six figures mm -hmm. you know and, and it's important because people don't realize that this is a compounding game so you know they say you're not really playing in the stock market until you make your first million then you go now you're really playing the game you can make some really important decisions on positions and ultimately not be like I have to sell one position to buy another and mm -hmm. you can take multiple positions. Uh, w when you look at kind of like your own future and I know you recently left your job uh, and you're kind of doing you, you've learned alternative assets as part of like a, a series of investment portfolios mm -hmm. you're kind of wanting to get into you're also doing real estate. Why do you think people should be paying attention to watches? Uh, just as much as real estate or stocks? I think watches are a very good thing to get into because it's something different that is not completely 100% widely known as a valuable asset. So you talk about real estate. Everybody knows you make money in real estate. If you're a good investor or mm -hmm. you're, you're buying and selling real estate, everybody knows that already. Everybody already knows you can make money in the stock market. Mm -hmm. Not everybody knows that about watches. Everybody knows what a watch is. Some people think a Casio is a watch, but you talk to anybody on the street, they know what a Rolex is. They know they're expensive. They know that if you're rich, you have one. So everybody knows something about watches, but not everybody knows that um, watches are a very, um, valuable way to transfer money and to transfer money around and to invest your money. And so I think as that becomes more widely accepted, there's going to be even more opportunities on the market, more people are going to start playing in it. So right now, I mean, you, you talk to people, oh, back in the 90s, I was picking up Daytonas for three grand or mm -hmm. whatever. Now you can't get a Daytona for under 20 grand. And so it's, as inflation goes up, um, watches are also going up in price and as more people are playing in it that makes them more desirable there's more demand with of generally about the same amount of supply so I think as more and more people start to play in this it becomes a more and more valuable um, asset in society essentially we are more people are playing in it we're into it kind of at the entry level of really wealth transfer and alternative assets so 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 you've gone through part one, part two, part three. Mm -hmm. What was the biggest takeaway for each part? Like that, because people sometimes still give me resistance for like, why should I pay two grand for part two? Why should I pay three, five grand for part three? You know, they, they yeah. can't connect the dot. They go, that's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. But really in the context of things, it's not a lot of money. They just don't, they haven't made money with it. So they, they don't understand that part. What have you taken back from each of these courses? So there, there's definitely a different lesson in each one of the parts. Part one, it teaches you what watches or what watches are essentially, what watches to go after, how to buy them, how to sell them, and you know how to how to break even or you know just enjoy the watch you um, wanted without losing money. Part two, that's what I took away from part two. That's where I really learned how to scale it up into a business, like to an actual income-producing business. Part two has more negotiation strategies, things where you can really, um, where you can really assess these more, like I said before, as financial transactions and really um, assess the numbers differently. And so that's why I learned more of the, the scaling up. So the data basically. The data, yeah, the data versus the watch itself. Okay. And then part three, which is only a few months old now, um, what I took away from that is the more passive long-term game from that and 
how this plays into the entire worldwide market and how, you know, even if the U.S. economy takes a shit, we still have stuff that has a, a worldwide market and we can still move our money mm -hmm. um, outside of the U.S. So it's not like a stock market goes down, you can't sell those stocks over in Portugal or whatever, but right. you, can, you can sell a watch over there, so... So it's cool to me because, you know, it's, it's good to see people transition, right? We always created a watch trading academy for people to go from part one, part two to part three so they could graduate. You know, you yeah, don't want someone yeah, stuck absolutely. in the 10th grade. You want right. them to get through the 12 and like go to college, right? right. Like Learn not, some more things. Exactly. Yeah. To kind of progress on their own, right? And uh, previously to have in part three, we didn't have that exit. You know, we basically had people basically stuck here. Uh, and I felt that that strategy was something, you know, that was just unique and new and enabled people to kind of play the full game instead of the, the half mm -hmm. game. Uh, and it's good to see you take advantage of it because I see your portfolio has all types of watches. You have the flips, you have the long flips, you have the vintage, mm -hmm. you have the holds for part three. So it's a really, really good feeling to see someone in the 100K club basically use the entire directory of opportunity and not just like, I'm just going to wholesale watches at Rolex ADs for 500 bucks a pop, you know? Right, and right. that gets old, like, it gets boring. I so. mean, it, it gets hard, right? Yeah, it, it gets, gets harder hard and harder. Yeah. I think people sometimes get confused in the Rolex game where they make some money up front, but really they forget that in the long term, it's not a sustainable long term strategy, it's just something they're doing. Right. And, and, and that's what I had, uh, what I had seen before I joined Watch Training Academy, where I was, you know, getting deals at Rolex dealers and saying, oh, this is great, but it was kind of like with the whole 401k thing. I was relying on somebody else to make money. I was relying on somebody else to give me that deal before I could do it. So I knew that wasn't sustainable, and that's why I never really got too heavy into it. And then, you know, within the past year, it's like, again, you're relying on yourself to find the deals, to find the buyers, and you're you're making the money happen for yourself. So. Cool. Well, congratulations well, again. Thank you very you know, much. I think $100,000 is a, is a lot of money, to, especially when it's such a short time frame. I actually think you're probably the fastest record holder for the 100k club like i think the average person takes like a year and a half to two okay. years uh i think you just did it under that so i mean again technicalities but you know i think you that's <laughs> again the speed is the benefit of what we do it took me 10 years to make 300k it took one of our other members camden like what like two years you know like the point is that again the progressive nature of this packed with the information it allows you to speed mm -hmm. forward that concept there's no substitute for experience but there's still the ability to substitute the amount of time you learn you get advice from all those people in the exactly group. yeah so you have the benefit you. of having these people versus Absolutely. i didn't have the benefit of any of you so that that's kind of the difference in this model but congrats again on, on reaching Thank this milestone uh to your continued success and again guys this is once again another example of yet what is possible regardless that you're starting with fifteen hundred dollars ten thousand dollars five thousand dollars doesn't make a difference as long as you commit to the process as you heard from chris here stick to the program there's a program for a reason once you go out of that program and try to create your own at the beginning it can be painful and you could lose money following the steps step by step leads you to a place where you learn the process deliver on the variables and are able to protect your assets so that you can guarantee yourself not to lose money and instead focus on just breaking even and maximizing profit the better you get through the process so there you have it, another 100K club member. And again, a big thank you to you for joining me today. And to you guys, again, I'm waiting. Whoever's next, step up. This is the opportunity for you to join the 100K club. And I can tell you that every single 100K club member has gone through the part two module and gone through all of the BCVs and everything else. And as a result, has been able to accelerate their path to the very top. And so are you able to as well, because part two is open to all people. And while you have to earn your way into part three, Part two is absolutely open and an opportunity for every single person who commits to this trade to see themselves fast forward their way to a successful 100K year. So uh, again, congrats again, and we'll catch you guys next time on another Watch Trading Academy video.